women and children and elders. They are hundreds of children stolen from their homes in armed night raids as Zionist soldiers explode the doors of their families' homes to steal children sleeping in their bed and throw them in solitary confinement and torturous military interrogation. There are women who have been seized from their homes in Gaza, stripped of their hijab and thrown in the back of a truck after being beaten by the guns of Israeli occupation soldiers. And of course there are the images that we have seen around the world that echo the memories of Abu Ghraib, that echo the memories of imperialist torture after imperialist torture throughout the Arab region, but not only in the Arab region, stretching from Vietnam to the Congo to Namibia to everywhere in this world that has been targeted by imperialism of Palestinian men stripped naked, of Palestinian men forced to crawl through the dirt in order, it's Palestinian civilians, Palestinian civilian men targeted for existing and thrown in detention camps to be tortured. We've seen healthcare workers and doctors particularly subject to torture, execution, and abuse as part of the systemic attack on Palestinian health. And we also know that the Palestinian prisoners are leaders of the resistance as well. Leaders of the armed struggle, leaders of the political movements, leaders of the student movement, of the women's movement, of the labor movement. All of these are targeted and held behind bars because every single one of these 9,000 is a Palestinian Nelson Mandela, is another is a Dean of Kassam, is a Palestinian who is determined to fight for the liberation of their land. And that can mean through organizing their campuses, through opening a daycare, through providing health services to their community that enable Palestinians to be resilient and to hold fast to their land despite over 75 years of Zionist colonialism. And it also includes those who take up arms to defend the land of Palestine and to liberate it from an occupier that has built its occupation on death, destruction, and colonialism and racism from the very beginning of the illegitimate Zionist project. And so what we saw on October 7th is that Palestinians would not accept to be caged, would not accept to be held under siege, and would also not accept that thousands of their fellow Palestinians, that the leaders of the movement shall continue to be held behind bars and tortured by Itamar Ben-Gavir and his fascist stormtroopers. And so this action, the resistance holding captives, has one goal and one purpose, and that is to secure, is not to hold people captive. It is to secure the liberation of every single Palestinian prisoner and to march toward the liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea. And so we raise our voices as part of this global march for Rafa today for the liberation of all Palestinian prisoners, for the liberation of all hostages, for the liberation of all captives, of Ahmed Sadat, Marwan Barghouti, Abdullah Barghouti, Ibrahim Hamid, Abbas Sayed, all of those resistance leaders that the occupation claims it is unwilling to release. We stand for all of their freedom. And we salute all of the efforts, all of the deep and lasting sacrifices that Palestinians in Gaza, the armed resistance at the forefront, have undertaken to secure the liberation of Palestinian prisoners. Because this battle is for the liberation of these leaders. This battle is for the liberation of the people. This battle is a battle to end genocide once and for all. This is a battle.
that is not just in Palestine, but stretches to the people and armed forces of Yemen who continue to shut down the Red Sea in order to actually take a material stand against genocide. This is a battle that stretches to the borders of northern Palestine, where the Lebanese resistance continue to fight every single day to bring down the Zionist regime as well and to liberate the land, all, every inch of Lebanese land from Zionist occupation. This is a battle that stretches through Iraq, through Syria, through every country in the region, to the entire Arab nation, to the entire region, through Iran, and to every single one of us who are out here today in Vancouver, in Toronto, in London, in Berlin, in Caracas, in Johannesburg, in Paris, in Berlin, in every city, and every imperialist city where these, where the so-called leadership, the governments that are profiting from sending money and sending weapons to the occupation to maintain imperialist domination over the entire region, we know that the people are with Palestine and that the resistance is fighting to end genocide and is fighting for victory. And that victory will be a victory for the prisoners, will be a victory for Palestine, it will be a victory for Yemen, it will be a victory for Lebanon, it will be a victory for the entire Arab nation and the entire region to be free of imperialism. But more than that, it will be a victory for humanity.